This video covers using the SVG coordinate space. The structure of this video is as follows. SVG revisited, math coordinate space, SVG coordinate space, D3 append SVG revisited, D3 and SVG coordinate space, and the summary. All right, let's get started. SVG revisited, the SVG element is commonly referred to as the SVG viewport. Things within the SVG viewport's dimensions are visible. Things inside the SVG tags, though outside the viewport dimensions, are not visible. The SVG width and height are the width and height of the viewport. This setup tells the browser to set aside an area of 200 pixels by 200 pixels in the document for SVG graphics. This way, the browser knows how to place the rest of the elements in the HTML document. This setup also tells the browser that the interior of the SVG viewport is 200 units wide by 200 units tall. Why the difference? Two reasons. One, SVG is based on vector graphics, so it's not pixels inside. Two, units depend on the graphic that you are creating. In maps, the outside of the map can be measured in inches or centimeters. Measuring the inside in inches or centimeters completely misses the point without a scale conversion. On the inside, one unit could be an inch, a kilometer, a mile, or something different. So for SVG, when we talk about the viewport and what is inside, we will be talking about units. So when you look at the SVG circle example, it means that the CX, CY, and R are based in units, not pixels. This is what makes them scalable vector graphics. Units, not pixels. Math coordinate space. This is what the math coordinate space looks like when taught in schools. The graph has a coordinate space where X equals 0 and Y equals 0 coordinates fall on the bottom left and the coordinates of x grow as you move to the right, and the coordinates of y grow as you move up. Which means when we are given the coordinates of 25, 25, we go 25 units from the left to the right, and we go 25 units from the bottom to the top. If we then went to the coordinates of 50, 50, then we would go 25 more units to the right, and we would go 25 more units up. SVG coordinate, space, SVG coordinate space works in the same way that mathematical graph coordinate space works, except for two important features. One, SVG coordinate space has its origin point 0, 0 at the top left. Two, SVG coordinate space has the Y coordinate growing from top to bottom, which means when we are given the coordinates of 25, 25, we go 25 units from the left to the right, and we go 25 units from the top to the bottom. If we then went to the coordinates of 50, 50, then we would go 25 more units to the right, and we would go 25 more units down. Let's try some simple examples to see how it works. In this HTML document, we define the SVG viewport and four different SVG circles. Each circle is defined with a different X and Y center coordinate. Each circle is also defined with a different color. Finally, we add in a line break, a string, and another line break. We save this file and open the file in the browser. As you can see, the browser created a box for the SVG that is 200 pixels by 200 pixels. As you can also see, the browser created four SVG circles and also shows us where they are. Notice that we can only see a quarter of the black circle. This is because it is the only visible part of the black circle in the SVG viewport. Notice that we cannot see the blue circle at all. This is because the blue circle coordinates are outside of the coordinates the SVG viewport contains. That said, the browser still knows where it is and highlights the position for you when you hover over the element. As you can see from the coordinates, as the center point coordinates, the CX and CY of the circles grow in size, 
the circles move towards the bottom and the right, which shows us that in the SVG coordinate space, as x gets bigger, it moves from the left to the right, and more importantly, as y gets bigger, it moves from the top to the bottom. And that is the basics of the SVG coordinate space. D3 append SVG revisited. Just like with HTML elements, we covered how we could append the SVG element to the HTML document. We also covered how we could append attributes with names and values to the SVG element, which means we could create the SVG statement in D3 like this. In the next section, we will recreate the four circle example with D3. D3 and SVG coordinate space. We start with the HTML file that already has the four SVG circles in them. As this file already has D3 loaded, let's check to make sure it loaded correctly. D3 is loaded correctly. First, we want to append an SVG container to the HTML document. We append a new SVG container to the HTML body and assign it to the variable SVG selection. This will let us use this selection later without having to retype everything. Because append appends the element as the last child of the current selection, we can see that D3 appended the SVG container after the text four circles. Next, we want to append the four circles to the new SVG selection. For now, we hide the previous SVG code to make sure we can see the new code. Next, we update the command to change the CX, CY, and the style fill for the second circle. You can see that as the CX increased, the circle moved from the left to the right, and that as the CY increased, the circle move down from the top to the bottom. Next, we update the command to change the CX, CY, and the style fill for the third circle. You can see that as the CX increased again, the circle moved from the left to the right, and that as the CY increased again, the circle moved down from the top to the bottom. Finally, we update the command to change the CX, CY, and the style fill for the fourth circle. You can see that as the CX increased again, the circle moved from the left to the right. And that as the CY increased again, the circle moved from the top to the bottom. Also, notice that this last circle does not appear in the SVG viewport, just like the hand-coded SVG example. Now, we hide the JavaScript console and take a look at the SVG code side by side. As you can see, the two SVG containers look exactly the same. The only difference you may notice is that the D3 generated SVG does not use the word black. Instead of the word black, it uses the HTML hexadecimal notation for the color black. And with that, you should have a better feel of how the SVG coordinate space works and how it is different from the regular mathematical coordinate space. The summary. This video covered SVG revisited, math coordinate space, SVG coordinate space, D3 append SVG revisited, D3 and SVG coordinate space, and the summary.